Hey, this is Cal with Precision Rifle Blog, and I'm at SHOT Show 2014 with Ted Courageous. And Ted has a pretty cool product that he's going to tell us about. Thanks, Cal. This is American Rifle Company's M2. It's a multi-caliber uh, precision bolt-action rifle uh, designed to go head-to-head -head with other such rifles like the AIAX. Uh, this rifle weighs in at uh, 12 and a half pounds and that's with a 27 inch barrel and a muzzle brake and a magazine. Uh, it is the lightest rifle in its class. Uh, five, it's approximately five pounds lighter uh, than the 17 and a half pound AIAX. Uh, it is also uh, probably one of the best engineered rifles in the industry. Uh, one thing that we've done here is uh, we've designed a system to isolate the receiver uh, from the chassis. When the shooter is on the gun and loading the bipod, uh, the chassis will bend, uh, but this, bend, this bending will not be transmitted to the receiver. The receiver's uh, shape will remain unchanged. Uh, which will preserve the relationship between the scope and the barrel. When you're trying to design a rifle to shoot, to hit targets at uh, very long ranges, all these uh, little details matter. And the way we uh, isolate the receiver from the chassis is uh, it's it's uh, pinned. It's it's not bolted in from the bottom like all the other designs, which can transfer bending moments into the into the receiver. It's basically pinned here. This is effectively a pin in a hole, and this is uh, essentially a pin in the slot, uh, allowing for some, uh, some axial compliance here. So as temperatures change, and as loads are imparted to the chassis system, uh, there's no transfer of loads to the receiver that can bend it and adversely affect accuracy. Uh, another interesting feature of the rifle is the fact that it is ambidextrous. Uh, the bolt can be removed and reassembled with the bolt handle moved to the other side, uh, effectively making this thing a uh, ambidextrous bolt action. The fold and stop the folding stock uh, can be disassembled and reassembled with this member flipped over uh, to fold to the other side. So you, you can configure your rifle to fold either to the left or to the right, and you can put your bolt handle on either the left or the right. An ambidextrous bolt action, to my knowledge, is completely new and unique to the industry. Uh, you can see this rifle behind it. This has been configured with, it's the same rifle, just with a shorter barrel, a different color but essentially they're the same rifle. This one has the bolt handle on the left and the stock bolt. Uh, another interesting characteristic about this rifle, we did uh, AR style controls. We adapted the uh, AR safety. Well, the safety just looks like an AR safety. It's, it's completely different. But basically it's uh, adapted for a bolt, for use with the bolt action. It has a, uh, it's three positions, uh, safe with a bolt handle locked, safe with the bolt handle unlocked, and the fire position. The uh, trigger is something I, uh, is a, a, uh, an American right, that's my design, American right uh, design. Uh, it was patented back in, uh, I think, 2010, the patent was awarded. If, uh, if you just Google my name and trigger, and you can read all about triggers and trigger design, but to, uh, to uh, make a long story short, uh, the trigger, the, the trigger mechanism has 40 thou or one millimeter of sear engagement, which by industry standards is huge, and uh, the trigger only moves 20 thousandths of an inch with no perceptible creep, and can be adjusted from right now. Some people have requested lower weights, but as it is right now, uh, you can adjust it from about two or two and a half pounds on up from there. Uh, and again, there's no perceptible creep. 40 thou of sear engagement, that's significant if you don't understand triggers learn why that's significant. It's a, it's a pretty big safety issue. And 20 thou of, of uh, trigger movement is very, very small for that, for that, much, sear, for that much sear engagement. Uh, oh, other significant features. We used, uh, take the bolt out here. We used a Mauser style extractor uh, simply because it's the best. Uh, um, I don't mind cherry picking very good ideas. 
the Mauser extractor was probably one of the best ever devised. Uh, so we went with it in, in spite of the fact that they are rather, you know, it is a rather tricky part to produce, but we've got it handled. Uh, we also we also use an 03 uh, st 1903 style Springfield ejection system. Uh, it's completely passive. It's a robust little part. And for those of you, for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, basically the way it works is you retract the bolt. The bolt lug on the left side of the bolt engages the extractor and cams it into engagement with the cartridge. There's no. It's there's really nothing that can go wrong with it. It's a it's a small, compact, hardened steel part and a pin. There's no spring. There's no cylinder moving through a hole. Uh, it's just really, really passive and robust, and it's a it's a beautiful, elegant design. So I used it. Uh, the rifle also has uh, sling attach points. Two here, two here, two back here. So the buttstock is fully adjustable. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? One other thing, if you can zoom in on it, uh, just show you how the uh, ambidextrous bolt function works. Uh, this little feature here, this clever little feature, this is this is basically the primary extraction cam, and it can engage cuts that are on both sides of the bolt handle. One for the right side, one for right hand operation, another for left hand operation. So that the, that's where primary extraction comes from. The, the roller. Uh, works with the ambidextrous nature of the rifle. Uh, the other thing to take away from this is the fact that uh, this is this also doubles as a bolt stop, right? So to to remove your bolt, you basically just take the roller, pick it up, bolt comes right out, and the bolt stops on that basically that little nubbin right there, that's on the uh, extractor collar. So again, just to recap, multi-caliber platform. Didn't really go into how to do a caliber change, but take my word for it, it's a bit it's easy. Unless you want me to do it. Can, can you show me the uh, bolt face, how it aligns? The bolt face. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, we forgot another very, the video is getting long, but that's okay. We forgot another very important feature uh, regarding about, about this rifle, and uh, all the rifles have it. Even our M5 action has this because we use the same Mauser system. But we basically, the bolt lugs in all of these rifles do not need to be lapped. And the reason for that is the, uh, the bearing surface of the bolt lug is toroidal in shape. A torus is basically an O-ring or a donut, you can think of it. So the, 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 the bearing surface is basically a portion of a toroid. And that toroidal surface engages a uh, corresponding bearing surface within the receiver that is spherical. Right, so basically what you have is an O-ring sitting in a sphere. It can only find its lowest energy state. It can only properly seat itself. That's really the only condition that can exist when the, uh, when the, bolt, is in, when the bolt is in the receiver. So the contact between the lugs and the receiver is completely insensitive to the alignment of the bolt within the receiver. Uh, that's completely unique. What it does, it, it allows us to control how the lugs contact the receiver, and uh, with that, we can optimize the size of the lugs, making them smaller, and as a benefit to that, uh, it, it wasn't so much of an issue in the Model 2, but in the Model 5 action, which has the same uh, outside diameter as a Remington, which is 1 inch 355, uh, we managed to fit the Mauser extractor into that action because of the reduced size of the lugs. What most people tell you, what most people will tell you about failure mode of bolt lugs, shearing off and stuff like that, uh, a class in solid mechanics and engineering will will pretty quickly teach you otherwise. Uh, the the, sh the shearing of the bolt lug is not really a failure mode that we worry about. Um, but I won't get. I can go on and on with that. I won't get into the details of you know the, the stress and strain of bolt lugs. But anyway. Uh, yeah, bolt lugs that don't need to be lapped and contact, and you know, I think we can control contact and it works really well. All right. Is this anything else you'd like to know? Uh, I, I think that's a pretty features. good overview. There's a more detailed video out there that Ted's created. If you'd like to see, see that more. On YouTube. Um, I'll, I'll link to that. And uh, thanks, Ted. Definitely thank one of the much. most innovative uh, pieces of equipment I've seen at shot. Thanks. Hey, thank you.